Hi, welcome to Wandering Into the Woods, a podcast brought to you by the creators of Adventures with BG. I'm Linda. And this is Jarrett. And today we'll be talking to you about our visit to Berry Springs Park and Preserve. It's located in one of our, the places we go hiking the most, Georgetown, Texas. Yet it, it is somehow one of the best kept secrets um, in Williamson County and in Georgetown, despite the fact that Jared and I lived there for, uh, I don't know, a total of seven or eight years together um, when you put our time span together in Georgetown. Yeah. Um, we had never heard never of it. Heard of it. Visited. Yeah. Yeah, never heard so. of it. Yeah. Never heard of it until I Googled William Wilco Parks, and it was one of the ones that came up. Yeah, so uh, we look forward to telling you about our experience. So Berry Springs Park and Preserve is not always a park and a preserve. It's actually been owned by four families um, since it was first bought and established uh, by Western settlers. And in this situation, the Western settler was John Berry. Uh, who was a Kentucky frontiersman who uh, was related to several um, other frontiersmen, was a man who had three wives throughout the course of his lifespan. Um, And it was uh, his first father-in-law who invited him to go over to Texas, come over to Texas um, to settle lands with the Spanish government, um, that the Spanish government was having um, American settlers come and colonize on with the condition that the settlers would be faithful to the Spanish government and would abide by Catholicism, et cetera, not have slaves, um, et cetera, all, all the all the conditions that the Spanish government was trying to impose so that they um, could have the loyalty of these um, white settlers that they did not necessarily trust, but they needed because Texas had not been successfully colonized by the Spanish before. So, John Barry brought his second wife over um, to Texas, and they settled in what is now Barry Springs Park and Preserve. In 1846, he built a grist mill there, and Jared and I were wondering, what is a grist mill? I don't it's even. It's for grist. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Is it grist mill? Grist mill? I don't. Anyway. But it is a part. It is a place where you can um, turn grains into flour, and apparently they've been around for centuries. And Mr. Barry learned how to do this while you know throughout the earlier in his life, and so he thought, you know, we don't have that many in um, or any in Central Texas at the time. And so what he did is he um, built a, a grist mill in Central Texas, and Native Americans and other Western settlers would come to him to turn their uh, grains into flour. So from there, you can imagine he was a man that was uh, got along with Native Americans, with certain Native American tribes, and a lo- as well as, his, as the white American colonizers he was uh, coming in with. And uh, it's what I like about this park is that it, you see plaques and memorials that tell you about everybody's um, history and contribution to the area, including the ones who were there before John Barry came and uh, quote unquote settled it. And the tribes that the tribe that was there when John Barry arrived were the Tonkawas. And the Tonkawas were um, a tribe that liked to uh, mostly hunt and gather because they believed that they were the descendants of wolves. And so they, like wolves, they thought that they could only hunt and gather. And so they were in the area and they um, had enemies, including, I believe, the Comanche, if I remember reading the plaque correctly. And so to have allies against their enemies, they became friends with these American colonizers that were coming in, including Mr. Barry. So uh, Mr. Barry would walk, would actually... um, not walk around, but he would ride around on a white horse uh, because he knew that that was that was an easy way to stand out, um, and it was actually a way for the Native Americans in his area. Normally, they would kill a man in a white horse because it was easy to he was easy to spot, but they knew it was John Barry and that they depended on him or that he was a, a good ally, so that he felt safer riding a white horse, and that's what he would do. Um, his three eldest son from eldest sons from his first wife went and fought in the Texas Revolution. One of them died in the Texas Revolution. 
Um, and he, he was on the side, obviously, of the, of the Texians um, and the Texan fight for independence. And following that, his other sons went on to fight in the Confederacy. So this was Mr. Barry, and he went on to have a total of 18 children with his three wives. Wow. Yeah, he has uh, thousands of grand, uh, uh, presumably more than a thousand grandchildren and uh, great grandchildren, um, and he. The, but the property didn't stay with the berries. It it did change hands through the years, but you know, not it didn't change hands as many times as you would expect. It's only changed hands four times, and if you are if you visit Berry Springs Park and Preserve. Like I mentioned, you can read these plaques that tell you about the history of the area um, in different locations. And you can also, you know, your very first glimpse into the history of it is seeing um, a small graveyard of the Barry family there. And I think even Mr. John Barry's grave is there, isn't it? I don't know. Who's yeah. it was? A lot of them are hard to read. Yeah, they're so... The, the gravestones are so old that they're hard to read. But Mr. Barry's is actually some, they, they dedicated a new one to it. Oh, that's who it was? Yeah. So he he's buried there, but so is his mother and others as well. So it's pretty neat. So keep in mind, there's also a little uh, family graveyard in the area. They And that is the history of Barry Springs Park and Preserve in a nutshell. So about some of the items and facilities that Barry Springs Park has, it's got camping. Um, there's definitely Primitive spots and drive in. I don't know their walk up. I don't know if they're primitive or not, but you can you can park and walk up to them. It's got multiple pavilions, so you can have parties or get togethers and then you know go camping after that. It also has an amphitheater. If I don't know, I, I think that's most you know fit for boy or girl scouts. Yeah, it's a pretty small amphitheater. Yeah, but I don't know that you would just have it for a party, you know, right. unless you have a magician. Because that's the only <laughs> use for an amphitheater. Yeah, but it's available to rent as uh, well. There is also a fire circle or ring um, that looks pretty cool out by one of the primitive camping areas. There's also multiple trails. It totals a couple of miles if you were to do all of it. Uh, they kind of weave in and out, hitting the Berry Springs themselves, Berry Creek and paralleling. Uh, maybe the San Gabriel. No, it's the Berry Creek. It's not San Gabriel. It runs into that later. At the very end of it. Um, what else do we have? There's a playground mm-hmm. uh, that kids can play on. It seemed to be closed right now. I don't know that everyone was listening to that. It has real bathrooms and I believe showers there. So if you need nice. that while you're camping, you know, it could be a good spot for you. There are also uh, an old barn with a donkey. Mm-hmm. So the sign says that it's cool to feed it a handful of hay, but nothing else. There's a lot of reviews online that say bring apples and carrots, but don't do that because the park doesn't want you to. Yeah, and the sign at the park actually said there were two donkeys, but we only saw one. So I'm wondering, I hope the other donkey's okay. Yeah, there may only be one donkey now. And then, so where the Berry Springs is, they've kind of got it dammed off. um, And there's multiple aquatic viewing areas slash fishing platforms. So you're allowed to uh, catch and release there. So. There's a lot of area to look at birds, wildlife, the water, and to do a little fishing. It's very scenic, scenic, very relaxing, um, a great place to meditate. Just be aware of your surroundings because um, not only is it beautiful for humans, but it's beautiful for nature. And uh, Jared and I got to see some great critters, um, Mm -hmm. some that you you want to go up to and pet. And of course, you should not because they're wild animals. Um, but also, you know, the, the not so furry kind, you know, the ones that slither in the ground and you might want to be aware of and respectfully keep your distance from them. I'm talking about the snake. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk more about that when we describe our trip. Okay. And then finally, in 2010, Barry Springs Park and Reserve was actually named the gym of Georgetown as far as parks go. So it's it's one of the good ones. And spoiler alert for our What the Haters Say section, but there wasn't a whole lot of negative reviews about it. So it seems like most people in the area love this park. So regarding our trip there, when we first arrived, there were people uh, visiting with the donkey. So we decided it was best not to visit um, the donkey right then and there. Instead, what we did, uh, we visited um, an old, uh, what was it, Jared? An old it looked like the old homestead or something. Yeah, it's an old building that's undergoing some 
or might be undergoing repairs in the future. I don't know. It, yeah. It may not be going to repairs, but it looks like it was an original house for someone. I don't know if it was Barry or that admiral that owned it last, but yeah. It was someone's homestead and we chose that because it was the closest trail to us. I mean, it's also a cool old building and yeah. we just were attracted to those just because of how cool they are. And you're not allowed in, so it's all fenced off. Right. And it says stay away. Yeah. So unfortunately, we can't, we couldn't go in there and see some, explore it. But it, it, it is interesting just to see, you know, the outside of it. And we kept walking along the trail and um, including to what we thought were going to be just a few little gardens, but turned out to be uh, a home, uh, a, fam- a small family cemetery mm-hmm. for the Berry family. There was like four graves in that mm-hmm. one and there was one off by itself, but, you know, it was well taken care of and garden-like. Right. They're, they're um, circled, they're circled by a fence so that uh, everybody respects the graves and they rem- they're a good reminder of the original settlers of the area. Um, and that was really um, uh, somber to see. And and, mm. and then there's a plaque there to tell you a little bit the history of the place, including yes. that admiral that um, I can't remember his name right now. I can't either. Yeah, that, that um, was one of the last to own it. Sounds like we'll put that in the show notes if you're curious. Maybe. <laughs> and then... Um, after we did that, we after seeing the the, the family cemetery, we uh, went towards the pavilion. Walked towards the pavilion playground. area. Okay, so yeah, we're, we yeah down you're by right. The yeah, first is the playground, and along. Okay, so from the cemetery to um, the playground, first you you, you might walk by. Um, there's a large outside eating area, like um, uh, I don't know, just tables out there, outdoor for people to to. Eat a hat for large groups. I don't know. Pavilion is what you would call it. Is it covered? Uh, it is covered. And it's one of the pavilions. Yeah. And then um, you walk by the restrooms. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then you walk by the playground, right? Yeah. Yeah. The playgrounds are on the same side of the road as you. And then when you cross over, there's the restrooms. Yeah. And currently, the, the playgrounds are closed because of COVID-19, but um, they, you know... It, it, they look like they would make a great fun spot to play at. Yeah. They're not giant though, so. Yeah. They're for little kids. They are. Yeah. But it's just not a huge so, playscape, you know? Yeah. But it, it it looks like it would be make a great setting for a small birthday party for a uh, family. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then, uh, so we walked down. There's actually a bridge over what people call the lake there. So you can cross back and forth over that to hit the other side of the trail. We just. Took a small look at that to see what it was like. Uh, I guess the water level is a little low, or it's that time of year where there's algae. So there was quite a bit of algae, or more co- colloquially known pond scum. Mm-hmm. Um, then we went down further to the towards the fishing platform where there were people at. Uh, but we took a look around there. Uh, Linda started reading about the mill, and I took some pictures because the sun was setting. Yeah, it's a, it's a very zen area, very. Um peaceful there's a lot of flat wildflowers out there too Mm -hmm. and so you get to see some beautiful dragonflies um and other uh and there's little little plaques around that tell you all about the local vegetation so you can you can learn about the plants so just dewberries i'd never yeah dewberries that's a thing yeah (laughs) they they make great cobbler so if anyone wanted to know it's one of my favorites if you're but what's the danger? With, what's the danger with dewberries, here? Uh, you know, snakes or spiders like to live in them because probably other animals are coming over. Animals and insects are coming over to get delicious berries. And yeah, they get eaten that way. But you know, I wouldn't mind it if you made me a dewberry cobbler. Uh, but <laughs> while we were while we were walking uh, in the grass next to where the old mill had been, we actually saw a snake. Yeah, I was distracted by. Uh, we were distracted by first a duck. And then, oh, yeah, you were looking at all the ducks. And, and, and then, uh, was what was it, the other bird? I don't know, maybe a heron. Yeah. But I don't think we'd seen the heron yet. Okay, well, it must have been while I was looking at the duck and then trying to get a better view of the duck. And as we were walking... No, no, it must have been after the heron because okay. we were like, let's get back on the trail now. Yeah. So we were trying to take a picture of a heron and he was posing or she <laughs> was posing for us. And as we were coming back to the trail, you know, we yeah. saw a snake. It scurried away a little bit and then just watched us, but, you know, wasn't aggressive. Yeah, fortunately for me, because I, I, I had missed it at first, and Jared said, watch out for the snake, and I turned to my right. Oh, my God, there's a snake. You were you were plenty far away. You were like 10 feet away. I felt like I was close to I'm me, sure. Jared. And, and it was it was a 
it was it had like a black top and a yellow bottom. So yeah. I don't know what kind of snake that that was. And then after you know we got away from the snake, uh, we circled around the lake itself um, on the da- where the dam is. So they've dammed off the springs area uh, to make this little I don't know pond lake. Um, we circled back around on the other side and we stopped to look at actual Berry Springs. Um, it's a it's a neat area. You can actually see a little bit of water flowing out of it. They have mm-hmm. a small like run slash tiny waterfall, probably depending on the water level. And there's a little viewing platform there. Uh, I actually saw some fish in there. Mm-hmm. So there are fish. I guess people, you know, were actually catching things and releasing them back. Well, you, that's what you're supposed to do yeah. per park rules. So <laughs> yeah. yay. But not always do you see the fish, but you know, they were out there. Then we just, we kept going around. Uh, we actually completed that trail and right as we were finishing up there was just a deer and that was just like a mile right that that first trail that was yeah it was like, about a mile yeah. if you just walk completely around the lake it's about a mile but yeah. yeah on the last curve there was just a deer laying in between some tall grass and fresh mowed grass just, yeah. chowing just chilling down yeah he was just eating watching us it's kind of a weird experience you know I'm, I'm used to deers like seeing you and standing there and trying to be still but Seeing him in a laying position was kind of kind of odd. Yeah, hopefully he was okay or she. Yeah, probably a she. So we circled around. Um, we only walked a mile. Um, we decided, hey, we should we should walk more than this. Uh, so we took that same the same way we walked the first time around by the playground and the pavilion, and walked towards Berry Springs, like where the road is that you come in on County Road 152. Um, so we took that around on the boardwalk. And and then it, what did we see around there? We saw more deer. Remember? That was that was on the very way back. But did we see anything? Or we no, just just a lot of the placards for right the interpretive for the plants. signs yeah. for the plants. So we learned and about history. some plants. Yeah, yeah. It's just a very um, you know you hear the the cre- the water running through the creek. You hear the ducks, the frogs. Yeah, there was quite a bit of frogs down at Berry Creek. Too. Yeah, and so in summer we couldn't actually see Berry like. Well, Berry Creek, Creek from the trail because there's so much growing up right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that area stays lush because the springs feed that and doesn't get dry. Right. Um, so we got there. Uh, there's a little fence that lets you go into where like you could go to Berry Springs, but there's a gate. Mm-hmm. That's the end of the property. So uh, it's locked. So I don't yeah. think they want you hopping over, but it, there's clearly a trail or people have been doing it. So I, I don't know how you feel about that, but. You could go down to a section if you wanted, but there may be easier ways going back the other way to get down to the river. Um, after that, we circled back and we saw, you know, a herd of deer. There's probably 10 of them mm-hmm. just walking around in the open until we got close enough. And then they went head back towards the lake. And it was, you know, twilight or dusk by this time. Right. And that's something else that's really neat about the park. It's open till 10. Yep, 10 at night. And they do have some lights, so it's not completely dark on some areas of the trail. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we finished up and on the concrete trail. That's what it's called. Um, and it is like just a big sidewalk. And it's through that. Uh, we didn't mention it earlier, but there is a lot of pecans out there because that's yeah. what it was. It was a pecans area. So I think that one of the plaques or things we read said they, were, they planted over a thousand pecan trees at one point. Mm-hmm. I may be lying about that and over exaggerating. Well, and then they were native to the area too. So Yeah, but they specifically planted mm-hmm. a bunch. Uh, and so it's just a big open field where it seems like it'd be great for kids to run or to play some sort of game. Uh, we followed up on the concrete trail. When you get near the parking area, they have a whole bunch of different animal tracks. So some birds, some things like raccoons and stuff. All so cute. Yeah, so they're not real. Someone placed them, but if you're into, I hope they're real. They're not, but if you're into, you know, learning what different tracks are, it could be educational to show your kids, like, oh, this is this bird, and this is a raccoon, and things like that. And then, so we made it back to our car. We went to the donkeys at this point, right? But it looks like someone had already pinned him up. Yeah, he but, was at, but but I guess they're so used to humans giving them treats. As soon as you get near the donkey, he starts or it starts um, making got noises. Very vocal. Yeah. <laughs> So. It wanted it wanted us to approach it probably with some treats. Probably. So we saw that we couldn't hang out and see how he was doing. So, you know, we got in our car and we headed out. And that was the uh that was that trip for Berry Springs. There's more trails than we actually did. Mm-hmm. I th- I wanna say there's around three miles or so if you were to do everything. And we did about two with our walk with some 
you know, walking down the same area, but you could make it a lot longer if you needed to. Yeah. And it was really nice, really nice evening walk. Yeah. And for our next segment, uh, it's what the haters say. And, uh, so we had a hard time, like as we mentioned earlier, finding any, um, relevant bad reviews of uh, Barry Springs Park and Preserve. No one was upset about there being snakes right. or bugs. Right. Oddly enough, it seems to be like every review we've ever seen, someone complained about something with nature. Maybe we're the first to see a snake out there. I cannot believe that. <laughs> anyway, uh, there was one by a local guide um, on Google, uh, Lance Bressman. He said, the park is beautiful, a true little slice of heaven. However, do not trust your camping fee with the park staff for your night stay. They will make you pay twice. Make sure you get receipt for every night was five stars, but he only gave three out of five stars in his review. Also keep in mind, this was four years ago. And then for another review, we've got uh, a one star with the very long explanation of what went wrong at, mm-hmm. of Terrible Park. <laughs> They did a novel, a whole novel on why it was so bad. So we know they didn't like it. Don't know why. Don't know what happened. But it was absolutely terrible. Right. We just have no idea why. Yeah, something went wrong. And obviously, we disagree with this person. I mean, if anything was bad, that anything was descriptive, it seems to be maybe issues with staff and probably years ago. So yeah, and I don't know. It's like a county park, so I don't. I don't know where your expectations are when you're going to a county park. Right. It's not what I think. Like, this is going to be the best and latest and greatest. Yeah. And as always, you know, make sure that you're kind to people. You don't know what they're going through, Um, especially people at the county level, state level. They're trying to do a lot with less constantly with budget cuts, et cetera. So, um, you know, don't be a camp host. I'm sure they don't get paid or they just get to live there for free. And that's that's what a camp host is. So it's not like they're. Yeah. They're just out there doing their thing and living for free and trying to do, I guess, the best job they can. Yeah. So um, just be nice and keep your receipts. Well, this has been our brief overview and summary of our visit to Berry Springs Park and Preserve. We hope that we have given you enough of an overview to encourage you to take a visit there with your uh, family and or friends. Or even by yourself, just, you know, take it as a nice chance to go and meditate by yourself one day and one evening, one morning is when I would recommend, especially during the Texas summer. If you'd like to see pictures of this adventure, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Adventures with BG. Those are the letters B and G. We are also at Facebook at Adventures with BG. And we also have our website, AdventuresWithBG.com, in which you can take the opportunity to go on other adventures and see where we've been throughout the last couple of years. Also, don't forget to subscribe. That'd be really neat. It helps us grow our brand and make sure that you listen to us as we release new episodes. Um, Go ahead and keep listening on Spotify or your favorite podcasting app. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. That'd be really cool and it helps us grow and more people can find us. And as always, stay safe as you wander into the woods.